Good morning, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Scott Reich of Crime Talk. And earlier in the week, we went on a field trip. Well, today we're going on another field trip. Crime Talk 1 is back, but time is of the essence today, and it's a kind of a long haul. So, we're gonna have to fly a commercial. This is a little bit of work related and a little bit of personal and a little bit of relaxation. And we're gonna let the journey begin. And we're gonna talk about two things. First, interference with an air crew and the cost of going to law school. Is it really worth it? Let's talk about it. I don't have any garbage to put out today, even though it's trash day. And it's not because, you know, I somehow compost or recycle. Yeah, no. Um, the only reason there's no garbage to put out is because the only thing that we make at my house for dinner is reservations. All right, so it's 6.40. We're going to go and uh, pick up the lovely Miss Kristen and bring her a Starbucks to get her day going since we already have the official and slash unofficial Crime Talk drink, Red Bull. And then we're going to head to the airport. So today, let's talk about interference with an air crew. This is a federal offense because what takes place on an airplane is obviously up in the air. It can be hard to distinguish uh, which state you were over uh, when this alleged crime would be committed. And so it makes sense for the feds to have kind of exclusive jurisdiction because they have preempted the regulation of aviation. Um, you know, each state doesn't have their own aviation rules. The federal government does that. They preempted it. Just like the feds preempted drug regulations um, until recently when the state said, no, we're going to do something. And it's only because the federal government allows them, for example, to grow pot, sell pot, um, that it even exists. All it would take is one person at the Department of Justice to say, we're no longer going to allow that. And that's going to happen. But that's what you call federal preemption. The feds have overtaken it. They've created all the rules so that there's uniformity versus a hodgepodge of different regulations everywhere. Interference of an air crew. Federal jurisdiction, normally these types of cases happen when somebody gets upset with a flight attendant. And are we talking about they get frustrated that their luggage won't fit in the overhead bin? No. Normally it involves, and in my experience in the cases that I've handled regarding this, it usually involves alcohol. Alcohol. Lots and lots of alcohol. People usually don't remember what they had either before they got on the plane or they had just a little bit. And whatever they had on the plane was enough to put them over the edge where they became rude and belligerent. So we're heading through, have to go almost to downtown to the designated Starbucks. But so far traffic's not too bad. I 
have arrived at Starbucks. I'm going here before I go to pick up the lovely Miss Kristen. You may ask yourself, why? Let me tell you, this is a bonus in today's video. It's called dating tips, all right? If you'd like to keep your significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend happy, do this, it works every time. Anticipate what they want. Don't wait for them to ask you, would you give me a cup of coffee? Don't wait and for the rhetorical question, do you think we have time to get coffee? Go get the coffee. You know they want it. You know they're going to drink it. You're going to wind up getting it anyway. So just go get it. Keeps a lot of people happy. You're welcome. So we have coffee and just a little reminder that whole anticipating what you think people may want it works good with employers clients pretty much everyday life so don't wait to be asked just do it there is the crazy horse it fell during construction and killed the sculptor it's just not right it's evil horse everybody knows it but now we're approaching DIA We've picked up the lovely Miss Kristen. And we're gonna do what we hate to do, and that's commercial air travel. But. All right, here we are, we're at the DIA. We just checked our bags over here. And this is the hotel at the Westin. Now, little pointer here. Uh, if you stay at this hotel, do not stand in front of the window naked and uh, have a telephone conference while you're doing that because people on the outside will see you and guess what you will be charged a United Airlines pilot was charged with indecent exposure to exposing himself he thought the windows were not uh, clear and that you can only see out not in the case was ultimately dismissed but obviously he was arrested and uh, was was uh, uh, obviously quite embarrassed by going through the judicial process. So just a quick little reminder, and if you're ever here at DIA, you can go out here and, I don't know, hang out, I guess.
So we were on the plane and we had to get off the plane so they could change a flat tire. So we're waiting now and being flexible. And there are the mechanics fixing and replacing the tire. With our tire change in Denver, we have a tight connection. So the Miss Kristen is leading the way. Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Scott Reich of Crime Talk, and this is the second item on the docket. Sorry it took so long, but we were traveling here yesterday to uh, get some legal work done, and today we were able to get it done, and we were also able to enjoy the spa. One of the greatest pleasures in life is going to a good spa. If it were an Olympic sport, I would be a gold medalist. All right, so number two on the docket today is the fact that Chicago, Stanford, and Columbia just hit the $100,000 a year mark for tuition. When I first read this, I thought, this is a travesty of a mockery of a sham. $100,000 for a legal education per year? That's crazy. Now, Harvard has always been there, kind of really close, but no one wanted to hit the 100,000, and they all try to say that it is really only one third actually goes towards the tuition the other two-thirds is room and board and things of that nature. That's still crazy. Most law schools are the same. The professors are the same. The subjects they teach the same. The bar exam that everybody takes is generally the same. It varies differently from state by state, but for the most part, it's a multi-state bar exam. Now, some people say, oh, somebody went to Harvard, somebody went to Yale, somebody went to Stanford. Yeah, okay, guess what? Do you know how you can tell if somebody went to Harvard, Yale, or Stanford within the first five minutes of meeting them? Because they'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you, uh, tip your waitress. All right, so, that's crazy. Uh, so anyone uh, thinking about going to law school out there, I encourage people to go. I went to law school because someone encouraged me to go and I encourage all people who've ever thought about going to go to law school. It gives you a well-rounded education, whether it's business, uh, the law obviously, uh, it's a good education. I know people that went to law school as opposed to getting an MBA. It just gives you that uh, well-rounded information that you need in life uh, regarding contracts. Um, 
uh, nuances. That's what lawyers do. Can most people these days go and uh, Google a general answer? Yes, but it is the nuances of the law that is what attorneys do and what they learn over the course of their career. That's why the more expensive the attorney, the old, usually the older they are because they know all the nuances. They've dealt with the cases where they've seen things happen. All right, that's it today. What do you think? $100,000 a year for an education? Is it worth it? I don't know. It help, can help you provide a pretty good living, but uh, you'll be paying it back for a long, long time. And most people don't realize that most attorneys don't get out making six-figure incomes right out of law school. Have a great day.